So I knew those bills were being paid on time. He had a really good job record, good job history. I'm like, we're going to go see lenders. That's what we're gonna do. And I set up appointments with them and I went with them and we talked to lenders and sure enough, they all said, yep, yeah, you can qualify for a USDA home uh, loan as long as you don't buy in Wailuku and, and Kahului. And so, and that's not what, you know, they wanted up country. And so we got them a home. But I'm just sharing with you how, duh, we're sitting on the beach and they're talking to me about moving again. And I got a sale out of it, right? And I've gotten three referrals out of them too. Wow. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Um, all right, and then we go to closing. So I love these. These are closes in a, in a kind of a funny way. So we're just <laughs> gonna go around the room and everybody try one of these. So we're on page 19, it's called number three, the close, the close. And the idea is your goal for the call is to close for at least one of the following, an appointment, a referral, or a reciprocal connection with them, right? So something. So let's start over here. Do us the hard close. Let's That's meet. Me. <laughs> <laughs> let's meet. Let's meet. Uh -huh. <laughs> that sometimes can work. Yeah, do the next one. I really enjoyed that. No, hold on, give it to Jordan. I really enjoyed visiting with you. How would you like to get together to discuss this further? The soft close. Is that going to be effective? You just thought. left it in there, right? When would you like to get together, right? So it's a tougher one to nail them down with. To get this, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Can we meet today or would tomorrow be better? There you go. Mm -hmm. That's a little. That's it. That's, that's it. Just say it, right? All right, Teresa, the indirect close. Would it be okay? If I got some information to look over and then we can meet to discuss. Talk about indirect. <laughs> Would it be okay if I got you some information? Like, okay, but some, you know, whatever. It's a close. You. Let, let me not bother you. Right, yeah. exactly. All right, um, Patrick? Uh, I think you would agree that we have gone over enough today. Uh, that meeting would be our next step. Okay, that's. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. <laughs> Corey, give us the next one. Uh, Number, six. Number six. Sounds like we should meet. I'm available Available most times this week, so what that works for you. Okay, so you can see number one, I would never want to say to somebody I'm available most times this week. Yeah, you don't want to Because number one, I'm not. And number two, it just doesn't sound terribly like you're not very busy, are you? No. <laughs> so, um, and not that that's terrible, but, um, and number two, like we said before, if, if you make, we make it a lot easier on people when we don't give them such a big range, but make very clear two choices, two choices. And then if you need a third one, you can add a third, but yeah. All right, what's another one? The negative positive close, <laughs> oh, no. Angie? Would you be offended if I asked if we could meet to go over this? That just sounds like what? <laughs> afternoon or tomorrow morning that's the one that I recommend right like yeah I think it's time for us to sit down and uh, when is good for you awesome all right and then cultivating cultivating we've talked about um, putting them on a drip campaign so I am just going to take a moment here
logging into MyKW, <clears throat> and I just wanted to point out that this here is your eEdge panel. When right ours here. actually gets set up, that's what it's going to look like, and that's what that's we know. correct. That's when we will know it's set up. So you need to right. That's what I'm saying. Get in touch with Scott Leroy. If this isn't black, if this is black for you and you can't see these little icons, you need Scott Leroy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you can go to marketing right here and you click on the little um, plus sign and we can go to create a marketing campaign. Now I want you to know I totally self-taught myself. I did not watch a bunch of videos. I'm just one of those people that isn't afraid to go around and clicking and seeing what it does and go back and do it this way or do it that way and go, oops, that didn't work. You know, it, it, you can't break these things. So um, I just kind of browse around. So. Um, this is kind of an overview and it tells us here's our monthly newsletter. This is the e right at the top because it's the one that makes the most sense to sign people up for. So what I've done now is I've, I've still got people on the monthly newsletter and in command, so I've got my database of both, in command I'm sending them um, snapshots or you know a monthly mailing about the neighborhood that they're interested in. Um, gives them listings on a map. So I alternate those, and that's what I've got going out to people. And I can take the newsletter and I can customize it. Now over here, we have design library, so we have templates, campaign templates. When we talk about six, uh, 33 touch, there are 33 touches in here that have also, remember I talked about, about an eight by eight. There's an eight by eight campaign, and it says right here, this one's six email steps, and three activities. Here's an eight by eight again. Uh, most campaigns are for a single agent or for a team. So they'll be repeated, okay? And then we've got an eight by eight for sellers, and then we've got a million dollar buyer lead conversion, and then we've got a 12 direct. These are email 12 directs. And then we've got uh, 12 direct that are cards. These are mail steps. So if you want to initiate a campaign, a card campaign to a neighborhood, you can do it right here and you can mail it out of here. You can upload the list that you get from an escrow company and say send and they'll charge you the printing and the postage and they mail it. Now make sure you put yourself on the mail list so that you can see that it arrived. And then you're gonna put the office as the return address and you're gonna get some back, right? And you're going to have to take those off of your list because the addresses are wrong or whatever it is. So um, just so you know that. But that's what this offers. This whole area in eEdge is um, it's full of content. So I just want to go back and give you an example. So you just click on this and look inside and then you can actually see the creative. You can see it. And then it says, do you want to personalize it? You hit personalize, and you can see how you could modify it. It is going to automatically put your um, information, your picture, our logo, and your information at the bottom. So it will totally be from you, customized for you. So here's all the newsletters I've sent out, and here is. That's my, see, so my December, mine goes out on December 12th. You get assigned a date and you can't change the date. That's just the way it is. And um, they've just told me that it's now available for me to personalize. This is what I did to my November newsletter. Here's the bottom of it. So this is what the bottom looks like, right? Looks very nice with me and blah, blah, blah. Here's an article down here called USDA Loans. They're not just for homes in the, in the boonies. Here is an article about remodeling stats and spending trends to inform your improvement plans. That, that was kind of a cool article. And here is what do Maui statistics say? And I just wrote a little paragraph and I used a graphic from an email that we got from the Realtors Association two weeks ago. I thought, well, this is kind of a cool graphic. It tells us what's happening in October and it says that um, home sales are up and condo sales are down and here's the averages. And it was just kind of a cool little graphic. So I just copy pasted, wrote a little paragraph and I was done in 10 minutes. Saved it, didn't change the name, don't change the name. 
and I had my customized newsletter. So um, I want you to know that that's available in eEdge. So again, to get there is to go to... Uh, so why are the dates assigned and we can't change them? Because there's 180,000 agents that are signed up and have this potential and the company can't handle it all, that to do it all at once or to have you choose it. So they that's the way it is. I can't, I, I, I don't know specifically, I'm just assuming, all I can tell you that's the way it is. So you're gonna get assigned, when you start it, you will be assigned a date and that's the date that your newsletter goes out. You get used to it and you can assign other things a certain date to start. So you can modify everything else around it, okay. which is kind of nice. Okay. Question? Okay. Uh, is that a certain date every month? Mm -hmm. It's the same, always on the 12th. Okay. Mine goes on the 12th. A lot of other people's goes on the 7th. Do you do a newsletter? Mine's on the 7th. 7th, right? Yeah, a lot of people's is on the 7th. Can you do it like every other month and not every oh, month? Oh, can you? Sure. You can, you just, you're going to get a notification that your newsletter is ready, and I can now go in and say delete this. Don't send it. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you can basically customize it, but then there's also built-in articles as well that you can use. Your customers, Everything which in you eEdge is filled in. Everything in eEdge has content. Does that make sense? You can totally go in and customize it, but everything has content. You can take the content out. You can even replace it. There's different articles. Like if you wouldn't like the USDA article and you wanted to put one in about garage sales, mm -hmm. they probably have an article about garage sales that you could put in. So you can do that, or you can write your own. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which. So if you were to keep the customized one, would it be the same as someone else that has the same exact customized one? Like, would you have the other realtors that are sending out an email? Would it be yes. same custom emails or like the info in the email? If it's, it's like, not customized, yes. If you didn't change it, yes. Okay, so what your email will look exactly like my email. Okay. My, your newsletter will look exactly like my newsletter, except at the bottom, it's your picture and info and at mine at the bottom is mine. Okay. The customizing I did, no, that's only mm -hmm. online. That's, yeah, that's, okay, yeah. cool. And that's, that's how you can differentiate. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so don't be afraid to go into, um, this is your eEdge panel right up here. So here's your contacts for eEdge here, and here's the marketing tab would take me back to the marketing front. Okay, I don't want to spend more time there. I just wanted you to be aware that this is there as well, as well as in command, what I showed you the other day, in command, you can go within a contact and you open that little icon that looks like a page and you're gonna set up a landing page for your, uh, a snapshot for your client and you can activate them for Kihei, North Kihei, Central Kihei, South Kihei, whatever area you think they're interested in and you can choose bi-monthly or monthly and right, that's the one I told you to set yourself up for. And you're gonna see, you're gonna, they're gonna get a monthly email with maps of North Kihei, Central Kihei, South Kihei. And they click on the map and there's all the listings that are for sale. It's very cool. So they're gonna get these notifications on top of the Paragon notifications. That mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't set people up for both. Okay. Why not? Too many no, it's the same information. That's the problem with it. Um, so, uh, you know, this is what I set people up for when they're not ready to buy right away and I'm not sending them Paragon stuff. Okay. A lot of people don't want listings sent to them, but they like being able to click on a map and see what's happening in the neighborhood. So you send them their own neighborhood in Des Moines you can set them up for that, as well as the three areas in Kihei that they're interested in. And now when they go home to Des Moines, they get information about Kihei as well as where they live, which is kind of cool. So collaboration centers and Paragon should be used for people who are looking to buy yeah. right now. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah. All right, yeah. Absolutely. Otherwise, put them through. I would put them on the, on, on our, in our command, yeah. yeah. So. You know, think of yourself. You're not interested in buying. Why is somebody sending me listings? Yeah, I'm not. not annoying, yeah. 
I'm, I'm not even ready. I'm not thinking about this for another three years. Why are you sending me listings? Right. And then they turn you off. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, where were we? So, page 21. So, page 21 is our sphere of influence. And this is the circle I drew for you the other day, right? Um, except it's kind of filled in with very cool examples. So you can see um, some of the categories that we're talking about, right? You've got yourself in the middle, then you've got your neighbors, your immediate family, your spouse or partner, your friends, your relatives, and then the next level out, you've got your doctor, your banker, your social media network, blah, 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 etc. And the little graphic that says, all right, so let's say you got your insurance agent and you really schmooze your insurance agent and you make your insurance agent one of your 25 raving fans, right? And even if you didn't, if you're just staying in touch and having a good relationship with your insurance agent, they've got friends and friends and friends and clients and all sorts of people that they talk to. So there's this geometric effect by staying in touch with people, right? So, we're gonna have a little contest. Mm. On page 20, we're gonna take 10 minutes, and the person who can fill in the most actual names on page 20 in this graph. Are we on page 20? Yeah, this one. Oh, 22. 22, all right. Yes, this one, go to page 22. And the person who can fill in the most actual names, you don't have to write full names unless Whatever, but my mom, my dad, my uncle, uncle Tom, Aunt Sally, just keep writing. The person who's got the most, that's right, go. 10 minutes. We're filling in page 22. The person who fills in the most names gets the prize. Sorry, I was a one of my yes. people call me back. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly, I got that, I figured that.
Gray. If you want more categories, turn turn back and look at that circle. See if that jogs your memory any. fraternity house. I'm not, not proud of myself. Proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> names are just, just yeah. coming like well. Wow, hey. yeah, if I actually ever just called any of these people, it would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds. I can look you 
and you've got a mirror so that you can look at yourself in the mirror and remember to <laughs> smile. <laughs> do we sound different on the phone when we smile oh, versus yeah. when we don't? Yeah, for sure. We do, right? So, um, like one of the things I recommend you do is take a call yourself, use somebody else's phone, call your phone number, and listen to your message. I urge you to do it because if you say, Hi, this is Robert, and I'm not here right now, leave me a message. Oh boy, I'm so excited to leave you a message, Robert. Right? Hey, this is Robert, I'm not here right now, but I'd love to hear from you, leave me a message. What a difference. Mm -hmm. So think about that, right? Mm -hmm. And so they put up a mirror to help us remember to smile. I like that. Yeah, it's very cute. So uh, the same thing. What's your environment like? Are you like, is somebody going to disturb you? Are you in a place where you are free to do that, right? And then practice your script. What are you actually going to say? Have that in front of you. People work with three computer screens. People work with great big script boards, so it says if they say no, go to here. If they say yes, go to here, no, 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 right? People like who are into making sure they stick to the script and they get the as effective as possible in the phone calls they make, take this really seriously. So um, it's up to you. Where do you want to take this to? But what are you saying today? And um, and are you right? Is it rolling off your tongue? Are you sounding like you can? You're not reading, but can you just do this? And can you do it in a succinct enough amount of time so that you can get the number of calls then that you want to make today? Can you give us an example of your best left? You know, leaving a message so that you can you know do we ask them to call you back? Yeah. Or ask some exciting news. Yeah. Well, Tell me what you might say. Yeah, um, just, you know, so I'm not new in real estate and say, hey, this is Marion. I was just, uh, love to talk to you. Could you give me a call back? Or um, I'll try you again in a couple of days. And then if they, if I try them again and I don't reach them again, then I could, might say, call me back. I don't like to ask them to call me back because I don't want to have them call me when I'm driving or when I'm in meetings or for them to get me not available. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather be the one to put out the, the effort and that's, okay. right? Um, if I'm more available, if I'm not, my life has been a lot of meetings, so it's uh -huh. challenging for me to tell people to call me back. Uh -huh. So that's all. I like um, that. I'll yeah. call you back. I'll call uh, you but back. I'll call you back in a couple of days. I'll yeah. try you again. Yeah. Um, or if you want, you know, call me. But no, don't say why you're calling. Yeah. And you know, I have some exciting news. You want to add that in? Sure. You're going to get people to call. What? What? You know. <laughs> So uh, that's exactly. totally I've got this free app I'd like to give you. Huh? I've got this free app I'd like to give you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a present for you. It's so exciting. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you get it. Get yourself up. Get yourself excited. Get yourself going and do it. Right? Just start making those calls. Mm -hmm. and then you uh, um, update your database as you're doing it. Now, I'm really good at typing while I'm talking. I have to be really good at that. So um, I have. Um, yet to do this get myself a silent keyboard right because nothing like going clunk, 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 while you're talking to somebody that doesn't exactly work so um but i realized that that's what i need to do so if you like taking your notes right while you and type get yourself a silent keyboard or one of those even the rubber thing that you put over it yeah. tends to dampen is that what you've got yeah so, um, and if you're good at that, right? Otherwise you're gonna take notes and then you're gonna transfer those notes into your database. So, if, oh look, there you go, that's it. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that does kill the noise, right? To, to some degree. So, um, uh, being prepared to um, make notes, keep notes, and update your database right as you go along. Um, I don't recommend you make 10 calls and then update the database. I recommend you keep each contact open in your database, make the call, update the record, go to the next record, get the phone number, leave it open, make the call, make your notes, update the record, right? Keep it, keep it current like that. Um, and then when you're um, done, you need to um, track your results. So how many calls did I just make? How many contacts did I just make, right? What did I just do? Um, schedule any commitments. You got people that they want something from you or information or whatever else, whatever you need to do there. Um, and write thank you notes. 
Now, some people don't like to use daytime hours, like brain power hours to do thank you notes. Some people do them after dinner while they're watching whatever they watch or whatever activity, or they have, you know, they do it with my glass of wine. This is what I do at five o'clock. I write my notes and other people have a basket in the car. And when they're sitting in line at Costco gas, they write three notes, right? They just do it whenever it happens. But um, so when are you gonna be able to build that into your schedule? Um, if you don't get it, if you find yourself not getting it done, maybe you do it right after you make the calls. So you wanna just make a, send a quick note to somebody that you spoke to, right? And then you find yourself, you don't have their address. And you go, now what do I do? Do I call them back and say, hey, I just noticed I don't have your address and I'd love to send you a little card. What are you sending me a card for? I love sending cards, Let me, I need your address. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you make a note to yourself to call them again in a month to ask for their address, right? Just put them back up on your roster because our goal is to send them. And then what you can do is, why do you want my address? Well, you know something, I have this great um, ability to send you updates on real estate in your neighborhood and I need to know what your neighborhood is and that way I can send you like a monthly email and you'll just get information about what's happening in real estate in your neighborhood. I'd love to send that to you. So you can come from contribution by asking for their address, right? And that's the command thing. And you do that in each contact. Because each contact is gonna have a different neighborhoods that they're potentially interested in. All right, so that, now here's this video from the, um, the, what are they called? The Real Estate Brothers, that's what they call themselves.
Isn't that a great video? Yeah, it is good. Yeah, yeah, they are amazing. That was motivating. That was motivating, right? Yeah, totally. Um, nothing to add to that. Any any other ahas out of that? I love that that they said you're either part of our future or part of our past. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Just like yeah. you know, yeah, you know, somebody comes at you and they're. Like I've had clients, like I can't wait for this person to be part of my past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And the truth is in real estate, we work for somebody for two, three months and they're gone. It's not like a boss that, you know, oh my God, I gotta put up with this person for yeah. or quit my job, you know. No, in real estate, eh, eh. and if you really don't like somebody, you fire them. You say, I'm sorry, I'm not the right realtor for you. So we are in business for ourselves, we can do that. So absolutely, you just move on and mark them as don't call that person. Yeah, cool. Okay. The, the scrubbing of the do not call list. Um, there are services that do that, or that is uh, it's a manual process. Um, it's it's a uh, you can do ten at a time, or if you do a whole list, I believe there's a fee. So um, you just have to go look into and how you, how you do it. I bet you the escrow companies can also help you with that. And um, Mojo, by the way, is a dialer. It's a source for phone numbers and a dialer. Um, dialers, be careful, right? We've all getting those phone calls and there's nobody on the other end. And that's because the dialer is dialing so far in advance of the person available to speak to you, right? So the dialer is doing that. So you know it's a dialer, so it's just sort of click is right. Like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have time for that. So you can still use a dialer, but just don't be dialing too far ahead of yourself, right? You can set it for what you do. So does a dialer cost money? Yes, and um, do you need that not to start with? You let your fingers do the walking, do your own dialing, and then if you're going to get into this, you'll look into something like Mojo and decide whether you want to do that or not. Right? Does the dialer use your phone number? Does it assign your phone number to you? I really don't know. I've never personally used a dialer. Because if, it if it's using your phone number, then your phone number can get blocked as spam if it's using your phone number. It's, it can do all. You can do I, local. You can have some local presence will create a local number. Yeah. It's all you can find all that out when you're interested in doing that. So. Um, I just have a question about the do not call list. What's mm -hmm. that all about? Like, You've heard of it. I right? have heard of it. Yeah. But I mean, if I call somebody who's on that list, then what happens? Well, potentially they could notify the federal government, because it's a federal mandate, right? Um, that you violated the do not call list. I'm not sure what happens okay. to you. I'm not even sure that they pay attention to those emails, but potentially that's the case. And People who request not to be called tend to be the ones who are going to be annoyed at being called. So they're going to tell you, I'm on the do not call list. You obviously didn't check it. Right. right. So why go there? So is that, that should be public record then, the do not call list. It is. It is. Yeah. And yeah. how do I access that? Go to do, do not call list. Dot, dot gov. We just okay. Google, Google it. All right. Just Google it. And then you got to follow the bouncing balls as to how to access it. Same with your emails, you have to have an unsubscribe on your yeah, email as well. Mm -hmm. Which you if you use, demand, which, right? well, first of all, you don't need an unsubscribe on your emails. Yeah. You only need an unsubscribe when you do an e-blast to a whole list of names, right. right? And all the services that let you do those blasts have an unsubscribe at the bottom of them. So, okay. Um, Yeah, solid, um, I'm on page 24, so solid foundation, solid preparation for it is the foundation of any successful prospecting. Plan to spend approximately 30 minutes getting ready, um, prep your call list, rehearse your scripts, then take action, get your database or call list and start calling, and then maintain, finish, 
entering results into your database, write follow-up notes, track results, schedule the calendar, so you get it. It's a three-hour chunk of time, but it each the, you're not calling for three hours, right? It's going to take time to do all those other things as well. So um, just be aware that that's what your lead generating time is going to look like. Scheduling this for yourself on a daily basis is crucial because you're going to the week's going to go by and you're going to go oops I didn't do that oops all sorts of stuff happened oops I went to a class oops I went to and there was this event and then there was this and then I had to go to caravan and oop. So caravan is on Tuesdays here. You're not going to do lead generating on Tuesday mornings. When are you going to lead gen that time? Tuesday afternoons, right? Is that on your calendar? Do you see where I'm going? Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen unless you put it on your calendar and unless you start living by your calendar. So my calendar is so full, I can't possibly.